السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم أما بعد so uh, something we haven't done for a while uh, since mashallah as you can, you can see يعني mashallah the community is growing الحمد لله we have many many new faces coming to the community so I, if you don't mind I want you to shake hands with the people sitting next to you and get to introduce yourself to them get to know them by name inshallah bismillah even if you know them go ahead reflect them Shake hands with each other, get to know their names, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, Jama'a. That's good enough right now. That's good enough. Start with the names only. Okay, Bismillah. Allah, take his phone later, uh, Rami. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi Muhammad wa ba'd. Imam al-Nawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, yaqulu fi babi tahrim al-Nadar. This is the chapter, we're continuing in the chapter, the prohibition of uh, gazing at the opposite gender, basically, without any يعني, legal excuse or any need. قال وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال كتب على ابن آدم نصيبه من الزنا مدرك ذلك لا محالة. Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says Allah has written the very portion of zina which a man will indulge in, which means everybody unfortunately, will take a share in that. Everybody will take a share in that. Then he said, there will be, there will be no escape from it. لا محالة. And as humans, we're prone to make mistakes. And each one of us might fall into a mistake. Of course, some, Allah protect us all, will fall into major ones. And others, alhamdulillah, they keep themselves within the minor ones. As much as possible, staying away. But subhanAllah, we eventually, there's no escape from falling into some of these errors. Then he said, قال, العينان, زناهم النظر. He said, the eyes fornicate. And the fornication of the eyes is what? The sight, looking. وقال, والأذنان, زناهم الاستماع. Then he said, the, the, the ears will also will fornicate. And what's the fornication of the ear, Jima'a? Listening to lustful talks. قال واللسان زناه الكلام and the tongue will also will fornicate and the fornication of the tongue is through speech the talk that would lead there the kind of profane language that people use to kind of you know uh, provoke themselves and eventually get tempted and uh, raise that desire قال واليد زناها البطش and the hand will also fornicate and the fornication of the hand happens in many, many ways. Reaching to the desire in different ways. And also, you know, putting their hands in that which Allah made haram for them. قال والرجل زناها الخطى And the feet will fornicate. And the fornication of the feet and the legs will be walking there. Walking the distance to where the haram is committed. Or where they can reach out to commit any kind of this haram zina. And then he said, وَالْقَلْبُ يَهْوَى وَيَتَمَنَّى He says, وَالْقَلْبُ يَهْمَى وَيَتَمَنَّى Which means the heart, the heart will yawn and desire. So the heart always desires things. So if you sit, you know, lonely for some time, shaitan is clever, starts coming to you, just a passing thought, and then suddenly that thought becomes what? A desire. And then you feel tempted. The rising of the desire leads to something maybe to, to action. So he says, وَالْقَلْبُ يَحْوَى وَيَتَمَنَّى The heart starts desire and wishing. Wishing for things. Wishing to reach out to something or getting to, into something else and so on. And then he said, وَيُصَدِّقُ ذَلِكَ الْفَرْجُ وَيُكَذِّبُ And the private part will approve all of that or disapprove it. And the meaning of this is that people might fulfill that desire or abstain from it. So when they fulfill the desire, they go into the actual fornication or adultery. May Allah guard and protect you all from this. Or that they abstain and stay away from that. 
another meaning to this to this word. The Prophet ﷺ said that وَالْخَرْجُ صَدِّقُ ذَلِكَ يُكَذِّبُ and that private parts will prove it or not is feeling the intensity of the desire there. So therefore, that means the thought is not just now a passing thought. No, it's being an idea. And when the idea is in the heart and the, desire, the heart desires that thing, then you will see the effect in the private parts. And that becomes very dangerous, leads a person to go very close to committing a zina uh, and the haram act. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he makes it very clear that when it comes to the source of temptation, there are so many. Yeah, don't think yourself, or oh, you, alhamdulillah, I never thought about zina. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin. I would never reach out to zina or places where the zina is committed. or I would never do that. You see, don't fool yourself. Shaitan is clever. He says, mashallah, you go to the masjid, you pray in the first line, and you always come to the masjid for fajr, salah, and so on. So you can never commit zina. See these things? This is what Allah called وَلَا تَتَّبِعُ خُطُوَاتِ shaitan Do not follow the steps of the shaitan. Because the shaitan is not going to jump on you and say, hey, let's go and have some haram, haram actions. Or let's go commit zina. Shaitan is going to come sometimes in a form of advisor for you. Someone who will cheer you up. You're doing great job, mashallah. You're doing, doing good deeds. And then slowly and gradually take you from there into falling into the haram. And it happens. So it starts with the eye. You know, this is, this is minor sin. Allah is ghafur rahim. You could look and then astaghfirullah. Should be fine, inshallah. Didn't you learn that if you commit that, that sin, you can just make wudu and pray to rak'ah and the sin will be gone? Just go ahead and do it and then make to rak'ah. Of course, you feel too guilty to make to rak'ah right now, but you never do it. Why? Because it's a burning now sensation in the heart. That I have committed something haram. I'm, don't feel that I'm worthy of praying because once you commit the haram thing, the shaitan will come to you and says, seriously, you're going to make wudu right now and pray? Are you serious about this? Look at you. You're such a hypocrite person. And eventually, shaitan takes you from one level to the other. Looking, hearing, walking, reaching out with the hand, the heart starts desiring things, and eventually people would fall into the haram. May Allah guard you from this man. So be careful. Now, I don't want anyone to take this hadith as a justification for their wrongdoing. So somebody might say right now in their minds, Ah, no wonder I keep looking. Allah Musta'an. So that's Allah's qadr against me then. <coughs> so Allah put this on me. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And now they think it's okay to look and watch and listen and do. Why? Because if Allah ordained this to be as part of my, you know, my, my deeds as a human being, as an insan, so why bother? No, 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 no. Allah doesn't force this on you. You choose. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made this possible to happen. May are human beings are angels, which means we are prone to make mistakes. Now, when and how or how much, that's your choice. The intensity of it, this is now, it's, it's your own personal selection and choices. But you need always to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah for protection. If la qaddar Allah, if la qaddar Allah, the shaitan won that battle with you. And then you committed something wrong. Then always remember that the doors of mercy and repentance are open. And no one can close these doors against you. They are always open. You can always come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is ghafoor rahim. Wallahu ta'ala. Any question, Jama'ah? Yes. Is the story of the Prophet the Muslim who is going to It is, and I, think, I don't think it's going to come with us. But uh, uh, yeah, the, story, the very famous story of the Abid, a man who was from the Bani Israel. He was a righteous man. And he was like a monk, basically. Three, three uh, young men from Bani Israel, they wanted to go uh, on the frontier, so they asked him to take care of their sister while they're absent because they thought he's a righteous man and he doesn't desire women, so therefore, you know, Bismillah, he can be the good guardian for her. He, first of all, he resisted, but then eventually the shaitan came to him and says, listen, come on, you're going to prevent these people to do something good while you're sitting here? She's not going to even uh, reach out. You're going to even look at her. She's in her place, you're on your place, that's all. So they said, okay, fine. And then slowly and gradually, from one step to the other, he committed the zina. And then when he found out that she, she was pregnant, then he had to kill her with the baby. So he committed murder right now. And he started becoming a liar because when they asked, he said she died because she got sick and so on. So he committed so many sins. And it all started by just an idea that came from the shaitan. Shaitan is very clever, yani. Allahu Akbar. Nah. Yes? Does 
What do you mean? In terms of looking? No, it's for, of course it's different. Yani. It, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, dakaruka al unta. Meaning, man and woman, they're not in the same, in the same level in this regard. So the man's desire is different than the woman's desire. The man, how he processes this, they're different than the woman. But of course, when it comes to the liability and responsibility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're all equal. Meaning, listen, that doesn't mean that man, you know, he can get, uh, commit something wrong and get away with it. And the woman uh, uh, had less liability in this versus a man. No, we're all equal in, in, uh, uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to doing the good deeds and, and committing wrong deeds. We're all equal in this regard. Wallahu alam. Nah. Any questions, Jama? It's a serious test. It is a serious test. It's very delicate, hard to scale. You know, one of the alamat, one alamat al saa, one of the signs of the day of judgment, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Wa yafshu zina." As zina becomes everywhere, becomes basically popular everywhere. And Subhanallah, I mean, without without taking in consideration. The, the sophisticated society we live in and the access to technology and the internet and, and all that stuff and so on only then you would realize the meaning of the word tafashi tafashi means in the Arabic language when you say harf al-sheen it's just basically it's harf tafashi wa tishar it's basically a letter that shows shows dispersion and widespread phenomena so when you say tafashi that's the thing that, that spreads out and becomes like a predominant and overwhelming. So subhanAllah, when the Prophet says zina becomes overwhelming, basically, in our time, it is. It's highly, highly uh, uh, advertised on TV, even in prime TV. And back in the day when they used to say this is PG, uh, alhamdulillah, you think it's safe, right? Today, they say the rating of this movie is PG, Allah musta'an. PG-13, la hawla la quwwata la illa. It has soft pornography, basically. So it's becoming so dangerous, being advertised for the people at a very young age. Not just that. Even the internet as it's open, there were some filters before and restrictions on age restriction to enter these things and that thing and so on. But now even the open sites such as YouTube or any other uh, video basically uh, channels that you have on the internet, there's so many videos out there that would escape the filter. And eventually, since it's becoming overwhelming, regardless how much they try to monitor and control that, it goes out of hand. So there will be so many clips and so many movies, so many things. Kids will eventually reach these places. And the zina is becoming now not just among the adults. It's now going down to among the children. It's the norm in the society. It, I don't want to say it's becoming a norm, but it be, it, people, they got used to it. It's not, no longer condemned as it used to be in the past. And you see people in the street, Udu Billah, committing a zina, this is not your business anymore. Back then it was, come on. Now it's just, whatever, just their own business. For Allah Musta'an, I mean, so when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and the, as, as a, the Day of Judgment, and you come and approach the Day of Judgment, it becomes a big fitna, and it's a great test. It is our test in this, in this society, in this world, and by the way, Muslim communities in the Muslim world, they're not even spared that fitna. Perhaps they have more fitna in this than we do over here. At least we know that we need to protect ourselves. But over there, they drop, they, they drop their guards down, so they become more vulnerable to the fitna, subhanAllah, than we are here. So, uh, Allah Musta'an, I mean, uh, it's our test, and may Allah Subh'anaHu make it easy for us. And it's us Muslims who are supposed to be feeling the responsibility towards our neighbors, our communities, and even when they're not Muslims, actually, society, you know, to educate the people, you know, to at least to, to make sure that we don't get this to become not just normal, it becomes the standard afterwards, yani, Imam Did he, uh, do you remember any specific uh, dua that he recommended? The dua against that? This kind of, uh, well, we still have a few more hadith coming up, inshallah ta'ala, and we will discuss more in this. Yes. Can you read the first part of the hadith? The Prophet Sallallahu says, Kutiba ala ibn Adam nasibuhu min al zina Mudrikun dalika la mahala, which means Allah has written the very portion of zina which a man will indulge in, there will be no escape from it. So that's what it means. Again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and your families from that. Allahu alam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.